Welcome to the podcast. Nice, so you made up a, a story about a terminal ill kid to get a free goat. And it's like half root beer, and I finish filling it with piss. Get him, boys! <laughs> So, what's going on with you guys? Greg, anything good? Oh, you know, I turned down my job. We all knew you would. I just won a hundred bucks. <laughs> did you? Oh, well, I didn't I took it, so we, I didn't, we, the bets, n- no. Everybody, not... everybody at work put in money. <laughs> I'm sure they did. I decided I wanted happiness instead of money, and I want to be able to talk about cannabis and... and... And weed on this podcast. So I did it for this podcast. You have a a toaster oven and a spinny chair and you're surrounded by weed. I don't know what more you'd want out of life. I I think you made the right decision. I I kill for any of those things. Uh, Cannabis is my identity. And I want to be able to talk about cannabis on the podcast. And I, I would be very... I'd be government Greg, and you guys didn't want government Greg on the podcast. See, I was thinking... I was going to propose that we do no more cannabis talk i think we should have more jesus i mean i'll smoke to that amen pass it to jesus <laughs> <laughs> always i mean you know pass the duchy to the christ <laughs> pass the duchy to the christ oh yeah i know that song so i have this co-worker right who and, is that uh, I, I, I never received uh, permission to reveal anyone's identity, so I'm not going to. But I have this coworker, right? And they're farmers, like, on the side. They have horses and shit, chickens, all right? And they recently had some, some goats. And I'm looking at my backyard because my lawnmower's broke. And I'm like, I could really use a goddamn goat. Yeah. So they're like, oh, we have goats for sale. I was like, well, why don't you just give me a goat? They're like, I'm not going to give you a goat. We can sell you a goat. And I was like, yeah, but you could just give me one, though. So days go by. Did it work? No, I'm still working on it. Days go by. Wait, you should use a goat fund me. Oh, oh, I like that. Yeah. Days go by, and I call him over to my workstation. I'm like, can I uh, talk to you for a minute? I'm like, yeah. And I was like, uh, uh, so I don't know if you know this about me, but on my days off of work, I volunteer at, at the orphanage in Rochester, the one across the street from the commons, right? And like, okay, you do that? And I'm like, yeah, every week, no fail. I'm there every week. So you Imagine know, I, what those kids would do to see a goat. I was like, I normally go in there and, uh, you know, I do art projects with them. I read to them. And, uh, you know, there's this one kid that I'm really close with. Uh, his name is Timmy. Uh, he's a terminal case. He doesn't have, like, that long to live. So. Uh, I'm reading Timmy a book, right? And uh, we get to the end of the book, and I was like, is there any questions, Timmy? He's like, just one. Why would that nice person at work give you a free goat? (laughs) (laughs) It was like a four-minute buildup, and you can see, like, they're starting to get, like, a little teary-eyed and intense about it, and uh, it was so worth it. (laughs) Nice. So you made up a, a story about a terminal ill kid to get a free make goat. your coworker <laughs> uncomfortable and give yes. you a goat. Who's the real goat in this situation? This guy. Honestly, you better name it Black Philip. Have you heard about his day to day tasks? He's definitely the goat. That's right. <laughs> That's a sheep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's a goat. I don't know. I don't know what a goat sounds like. I think he just told you to fuck yourself. Oh, well, I don't speak goat, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't speak goat. Seamus, what's good with you? I mean, I got a promotion and a raise. That's cool. Woo! Congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah, I wish I had more free time though. Like, it sucks. It's super busy. I was super busy in the summer, and that's my that's my season. And I just I just want to be out enjoying the sun on the water. And 
It was supposed to be the summer of Seamus. Yeah, you can't really own, you can't really own a season, Seamus. <laughs> what I if get... I give up winter for <laughs> it? Actually, I was I was thinking the other day, like, imagine if Vikings had paddle boards. Like they would have conquered everybody. <laughs> they just roll up into your village all on paddle boards. All quiet like. Yeah, all super quiet. You wouldn't even hear them coming. Look, he's got his cooler in his fishing pool. <laughs> and he's wearing his Crocs. And he comes back with your wife and the jewelry. What up, everybody? Welcome to the You Gonna Eat That Crust podcast. I'm your host with the most on the ones and twos, Ryan Wilson. And with me tonight, my co-host, my co-homie, Seamus Rogers. Seamus, what's good, baby? Yo, yo, yo. You know, <laughs> ready to do this. We just had to wait for like three hours for you, but that's Woo! all right. I'm in good, good moods. Let's do this. Also with me tonight, follically challenged himself, the sweatpants overlord, Greg Hoey. Greg, what's good, baby? Actually, I just switched toilet paper, so I'm feeling fantastic. I love that for you. Yeah. What are you using now? Uh, this new product called Anal Soft. It's oh, fucking I heard awesome, about man. That. I didn't mean to try it. Oh, yeah. I just got like a quick little six pack of it. Uh, dude, it's like wiping your ass with <laughs> with like a tongue. With, with an angel's tongue? Yeah. It's like an angel's tongue. Cleaning that up. Someone pointed out that we are talking a lot about licking ass. We talk a lot about ass and dick. Period. And period. If you don't like that, it's not your thing. Well, there's other casts out there. Yep. Yeah. Hear it. Hear it. You need that crust podcast. We're pro ass licking. Yeah. Do your thing. Don't. Don't. If you don't. If you don't like it because Jesus says you shouldn't, then you're having no fun at all. Oh, Jesus looked ass. I agree. But he was probably a hypocrite that wouldn't acknowledge it. Or not. Maybe that's why he got crucified at the end. Too shy. It's just kink. Get him. <laughs> and he came back to show everyone that eating ass was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jesus. Amen. Uh, speaking of licking ass, Seamus, what is tonight's show about? <laughs> Ever wanted someone dead? Well then, you are likely a disturbed individual. Please get some help. Revenge. The action of inflicting hurt or harm on someone for an injury or wrong suffered at their hands. Revenge is what can make a person do something they normally wouldn't do. It can fester and consume a person's mentality. Revenge comes in limitless flavors, yet doesn't always fill the appetite. Rarely does it settle well. It can ruin lives and isn't guaranteed to make the one consumed by it feel any better. It can leave one with regret or devoid of feelings. Yet sometimes it's an itch a person can't withstand. We're talking stories of revenge here on You Can Eat That Crust, the podcast. Best served cold. Yes, Abercrombie. Best one of the best, book. best re- yeah. book on revenge. <laughs> yeah, that book's fucking you know, awesome. How about, how, all right, so how about some, what do you guys think your best revenge movies are? Well, actually, I just really wanted to talk about, real quick, I want to talk about Beef. Like, if you guys had, I know, I know Ryan's watched it, but I know you're going to finish it. Fucking Beef is the perfect example of why not to do revenge. It's the fucking show is, a definitely, you need to watch that show. It's very well written, and it just everything is based on like kind of like a road rage incident. Yeah, revenge, I mean, I do. Revenge, I would like to so much watch. I hope it gets better. I I just didn't like what's it, Stephen? You you you? I don't like his character. I thought it was a piece of shit. Well, he is a piece of shit. They're all they're all piece of shits. Like it's like the whole thing when it unfolds, you it's pretty insane. All right. Like Sean said the same thing. I was like, dude, I'm like, it's I think you overhyped it, but as it goes, it just gets better and better. And it's just like I mean, I did watch seasons and seasons of succession, and they're all just pieces of shit. So Yeah. No, you feel you see why these people are like they are like ugh. you see why these people are like the way they are, because they've had like some either childhood trauma or they've done something themselves. 
had something happen to them. I don't know. It's, don't, I think it's don't succumb to anger. It's just going to ruin your life or others' lives. Many lives. Or it just leads to the dark side. Yes, it's true. You liked that, though, right, Ryan? You you saw that and liked it? Yeah, it was dope. Yeah, I thought it was really well done. Obviously, uh, classic revenge cl- uh, flick, uh, Last House on the Left. Ooh, baby. She cuts the guy's dick off and microwaves it. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Well, which version, bro? I don't know. I don't care. Did you watch the other version? I, I've the other seen version? both of them at different points in my life. I thought they were both good. I liked them both. I liked them both. I just, I don't have a preference, I guess. Sorry, Jesus, I was asking. All right, can we can we go back to best revenge movies? Yes, I just did. Hostile, oh, yeah, you did. So is up there for that. me. I just couldn't. Remember. I just can't remember that movie. Uh, let's see, V for Vendetta. <laughs> Ven- Vendetta. Nah, I didn't really care for that movie. Movies. <laughs> The movie's dope. Eh. Asshole. I gotta say, I've never seen that movie. That's yeah. with uh, Hugo Weaving, right? Maybe I need to watch that. it again. I watched it once. Yeah, I've never seen I think that. in the theater. And I was I was never a huge Natalie Portman fan. She kind of like rubbed me the wrong way. I'm not either, but I don't think she is what ruined or made the movie. What about Bla- she was dope in Black Swan? That movie's fucking nuts. Never seen it. Jesus fucking Christ! All right, I want to name some ones movies. that our that our listeners would appreciate even more. How about Django? Fuck yeah, dude! Kill Bill. Yes, sir. Oh, and Glorious Bastards. <laughs> I don't see a theme. These all, uh, uh, these all Tarantino yes, movies. Those were <laughs> John Wick, uh, Gladiator, Old Boy, and Gone Girl. Thought that was great. I still, I still gotta see fucking old. You don't like V for Vendetta, but you like Gone Girl. I thought Gone Girl was a great movie, dude. Gone Girl was fucking amazing. It was an okay movie, guys. Oh wow, it's like no way. Like V V for Vendetta is like three crust, maybe. Gone Girl is like oh my god, you're gonna ruin our reputation. You're ruining our reputation. Dude, Gone Girl has got a fantastic reputation. That's a highly rated movie. Yes. I, I've never seen V for Vendetta. I heard it was fantastic. I'm not trashing V for Vendetta. I've seen Gone Girl and Go- wait a minute. Am I thinking? Of, I'm thinking of Gone Baby Gone. All right, forget it. I was I, I was thinking of Gone in sixty seconds. <laughs> I was thinking of Gone Baby Gone. I think Gone Girl is good. That's the one with Affleck and, and yeah. Which uh, one's Gone Baby okay. Gone? Gone Baby Gone's with Casey Affleck. They're both the good Gone, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Gone Baby Gone is the is the same writer who did Mystic River, and it's like pretty Gone Girl is like with Ed Harris, the one that was pretty heavy too. Like the, his wife like left pretend and tried to frame him for murdering her. Yeah, yeah, yep. Because, because yeah, she, he like was he cheated on her. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna bring up the Punisher TV show then. But now you got me thinking. Gone Baby Gone is when the kid was like stolen, right? Yes, yeah, and then and that yes, was probably that a better movie. movie. That, 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 oh, hundred percent. Right? That's why I thought. I mean, I can't argue with Gone Girl. I think that Gone was good was too. Up. But now I'm thinking that one hit me harder. That one was more moving. Gone, baby, gone. But I'm sorry. Yeah. What was that, Ryan? Doesn't matter. Move on. <laughs> no, it does matter, Ryan, because you thought we were talking about Gone Girl compared I, to V for Vendetta, thought, and we're sorry. We're talking about Gone with the Wind. Gone in sixty seconds, starring Nicolas Cage. Yeah, it actually had some hitters in it. Actually, that's the movie I've seen the most. That ended the movie. Hi, I'm Greg, founder of Anal Soft. I used to be a front weapon piece of shit. I got shit on my balls all the time. In the pain? Ah! <sighs> but thanks to Anal Soft and their organic Wolverine Healing Bead technology, I feel great down there. Let's hear from some satisfied customers. The caca doesn't hurt anymore. I like it. It's the only toilet paper with a thread count. My toilet paper was like sandpaper. I thought I was getting my period. Thanks, Anal Soft. I hate you, Dad! I used to dread wiping. Now, I wipe extra. Thanks, Anal Soft. When it comes to shit tickets, this is the winning number. Well, I love wiping to completion. I went through a divorce. I lost my job. But thanks to Anal Soft... I'm feeling better. Anal soft. It's like heaven for your asshole. Hey, I'm reading here. I wish I could just read my news on the go. You know, like a normal person. What if I told you you could? 
Newsly is an all-in-one audio super app for iOS and Android. It picks up the most trending articles on the web on topics you choose at any given moment and reads them to you in a natural, human voice. For the first time ever, the web becomes available all in one place. You can follow any topic, as specific as you like, from sports, tech, business, science, Bitcoin, or even the Kardashians. It will find you the latest articles and read them aloud to you. And they have podcasts as well. Explore trending podcasts from 80 countries. You can hear us there. And the Sinister Story is there too. I even started using it as my default podcast app. They even have digital radio. So download and use Newsly for free now from www.newslyme or from the link in the description. And use the promo code CRUST for a one month free premium subscription. So start playing, stop scrolling, and start listening. Hey, uh, do you guys have any personal revenge stories? Not that I can tell on air. <laughs> hey, oh. I'll kill you. I'll kill so. you. Oh. I think that I'm astute enough to know that revenge doesn't pay. I, uh, I have one, but I might have told it, but I'm going to tell it again. Uh, so, you know, in high school, I had this band, Socket, all right? We are New Hampshire porn core, all right? We had a rival band who I was friends with previously, Nadine. Rest in peace, oh, Jason the... Peterson. R.I.P. Uh, Peterson. So, well, Peterson's the one who started hating me because of my band. Like, some of the Nadine fans started going to our shows, and then he turned all these kids I was friends with against me. Which bygones be bygones. I'm, I'm sounds like high school politics. Well, are, are you only now. saying that because he's dead? <laughs> no, I I gotta let that shit yeah, you go, guys, bro. Yeah. You guys squash. You can squash the beef, and you're cool, with Peterson, right? Before he died. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but everybody else in his crew, I was like, you know, that was high school bullshit. It doesn't matter. You know, I've talked to a few of them. Um, so there was this one kid. We'll we'll say his name was Ann Daryl. All right. <laughs> Is he dead too? I don't know. Fuck that kid. So w- <laughs> one day I'm walking through Gonic, actually. Dan Errol? <laughs> Seamus. I was trying to hide his identity for the podcast. <laughs> it was Errol? Or- I thought it was Dan Carroll. No, it was Dan Errol. All right. Oh, okay. Like a little Marilyn Manson fuck. Uh, so I'm walking down through Gonic, and all of a sudden I see his car drive by me, and there's like a whole whole group of his friends in the car and someone puts their head out the window and goes, Sock it sucks! And threw a three liter of root beer at me. Yikes, that's like assault with a deadly soda. I know. I mean, at least you had something to you had something to pee on the way home though, with so, right? You could have peed in that well, three liter bottle. So I had the three liter bottle and I put it in my backpack. I was like, well I'm gonna make sure he gets this back. So I wake up the next morning And it's like half root beer. And I finish filling it with piss. And I walk up to his car, which had a sunroof, and empty the contents of the bottle onto his seat. Nice. Perfect. And then I get called called into Mr. Holden's office. He's like, hey. Oh, fuck that guy. Yeah, right? Mr. Holden, for all you don't know, he was like an ex-state trooper or some shit who came to handle the problems at Spalding High School. Uh, yeah, he got revenge on my senior year. It sucked. Yeah, well, so he's like, did you pour this to Mr. Errol's car? And I was like, I did, Mr. Holden. And he's like, well, you're going to go out there and you're going to wash his car down. And he's going to stand outside and watch you. I was like, the hell I will. <laughs> he's going to watch you. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was like, there's no way that's happening. I was like, should I wear a bikini? Or... <laughs> I said, well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Holden, I'm walking – so I'm walking home yesterday, and uh, Mr. Errol and his friends thought it'd be hilarious to throw this three liter of bottle soda bottle at me, and I was just returning it. He's like, "This is true, Mr. Errol." And he's like, "Well, yeah, but I wasn't the one who threw it." He's like, "Go back to class, Ryan." <laughs> <Sick>. <laughs> and you know what? It felt great, and it still does to this day. Oh my god, he got what he deserved. Yeah. Oh, fuck, Mr. Holden, piece of shit. I want your revenge on him. He's probably Played. dead as well. Leave him alone. Played for the Jets. I wish. Did he? Oh, I hate him even more. For the Jets. the Jets. Ex-state trooper. Uh, black ops. Military. Half robot. I feel like 
Most everybody that plays for the Jets goes on to meaningless careers. Mm. Mm. All right. Mm. So, so, sorry, so Jets fans out there. Curtis Martin went out uh, to be great, and he married a – I forgot who he married. It doesn't matter. All right, so we've compiled some stories from around the interwebs about revenge, and we'd like to share them with you. So, Seamus, why don't you start? Uh, yeah, I want to start with uh, Buford Pusser. The Great cop name. who took, took out mobsters to avenge his wife. Buford Pusser was a former Marine – that went into law enforcement. He's uh, actually he's the inspiration for the uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson's movie, Walking Tall. Oh, Walking yeah. Tall, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love I love that fucking that's movie. movie. Uh, he, he actually he had even had a brief career as a popular wrestler in Chicago. His wrestling moniker was Buford the Bull. Nice. That's a cuckold joke somewhere in there. <laughs> In Chicago, he met his wife, Pauline. The couple moved to his hometown in McNary County, Tennessee. He quickly rose through the ranks. He became chief of police and constable. He got elected county sheriff at 27 years old, the youngest sheriff in Tennessee history. Um, So he started cracking down on the mafia activity on the state's border between Tennessee and Mississippi. This area was controlled by two gangs, the Dixie Mafia and the State Line Mafia. I mean, State yeah. Line Mob. Yeah, it sound like country music bands or something. Get them, boys! <laughs> both, both organizations made a lot of money off illegal moonshine operations. You, know, got, you guys ever watch Moonshiners? <laughs> yeah, that's fucking sweet. sweet. This is right. This yeah, sweet. that's fucking wicked sweet. Uh, anyway, by the year 1967, he had survived several assassination attempts. He had killed several hitmen who had tried to take him out. He became a local hero. But obviously, this made him a target. On August 12th, 1967, his wife, on a random whim, decided to accompany him to investigate a roadside disturbance. A vehicle pulled up alongside the Pussers and opened fire. Buford suffered a severe jaw injury. His wife, however, didn't survive. Fuck. Damn, son. Suffering from guilt and grief over his wife's death from the actions of a mob hit, it is assumed that he was the intended target. He uh, he cracked down even harder on the mob after this. He publicly named his four assassins and Kirksey McCord Nix Jr., the leader of the Dixie Mafia, as the ones behind his wife's murder. Nix never got his justice for Pauline's killing, but the four assassins involved all mysteriously were found dead one by one. Whoa. Yeah, he was He's a bad punisher. He was a badass dude. <laughs> That's Real dope. life badass. All right. Walking tall, baby. All right, I'll go next. I have a friend whose pumpkin fall display at the end of his driveway would be run over by a neighborhood jerk. Happened every year. My friend decided to put a stop to it. He withdrew money from his savings account so he would have enough to buy the largest pumpkin he could find, along with several large bags of quick creep. Filled that puppy up and made a real pretty display. The jackass broke the axle of his shoddy car when he hit that pumpkin. Could not drive away. My friend had his car towed, too. What, he filled the pumpkin with a quick crate? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The big pumpkin. Uh, There's this one where this guy, this truck was parked by an excavator, and uh, the excavator got asked the guy to move the truck. It's excavator. 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 I don't fucking. I'm not a. Bobby, I'm not a mathematician. Bobby, can right? you widen the elevator? <laughs> a guy told me to fuck off when I asked him to move his truck. I was in my ex cavator, and uh, now he's gonna stay in the porta potty. He'll learn some goddamn manners and apologize for being a dick. And this is the scene here. This guy was just parked in front of the porta potty, and he put the excavator. Shovel in front of the porta potty door so the the fellow could not get out of the porta potty. He was stuck in there. That, that's remind. This is a true story. We I was with some co. We were working a job out. It was like some farm property. It was a very weird property, but you know, all properties need you know internet hookups and all that. So I don't remember what we were actually doing there. Um, but <laughs> I go over to Jeff went to. Uh, 
No, it wasn't Jeff. Jeff was. I don't remember. One of our coworkers went in and took a shit in the porta potty, and my other coworker Jeff pulled the van up right next to it, at, right in front of the doorway, so he couldn't get out. And and this is like <laughs> August. No, <laughs> no porta potty. No. Yeah, I mean, he must. It must have just sat seeped into his shit. Right in his pores, he probably couldn't had to wash. He probably had to wash that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> He's still alone to this day. <laughs> right. He needed a massage. He needed to massage it out. He still smells like a shitter. <clears throat> All right, uh, Maria Aktaperski. Ak, no, Maria Aktaperski. Taperski. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> during the Second World War, it is estimated that. Roughly 800,000 Russian women served in the Red Army, including Maria Oktapersky. She came from a Crimean peasant family, had a deep sense of loyalty to the USSR, and was a firm believer in communism. Marry a serviceman and you'll serve in the army, she once declared. When her husband was killed fighting against the Nazis in Kiev, instead of giving in to her grief, Oktapersky found another way to cope. Revenge. She sold all her belongings and bought a T-34 tank so she could kill Nazis. She named her tank Fighting Girlfriend. In order to ensure that she would be the one behind the wheel, reportedly she made a case to Joseph Stalin himself. In a letter to the Russian leader, Oktapersky wrote, My husband was killed in action defending the motherland. I want revenge on the fascist dogs for his death and for the death of the Soviet people tortured by fascist barbarians. Stalin, no doubt aware of the propaganda value of such a request, approved her plan, and Oktapersky underwent five months of training. Despite the support from Russian leader, Maria was still vastly outnumbered by her male compatriots, who likely put little faith in her abilities. It didn't take long for her to prove herself, however. In her first tank battle in October 1943, Fighting Girlfriend was the first tank to breach enemy lines, and Oktoberski proceeded to wreak absolute havoc against the German troops, crushing many under the treads of her T-34. A month later, she fearlessly jumped out of her tank to make needed repairs under heavy fire from the enemy, hopped back in, and got back into the fight. I've had my baptism in fire. I beat the bastards. Sometimes I'm so angry I can't even breathe. She wrote in an emotional letter to her sister. Maria X. Tapersky died fighting the Nazis a few months later in January 1944 during the Red Army's Leningrad Novgorod, Novgorod offensive. And I apologize for the bad Russian accent. It was good. <laughs> yeah, I like very much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you like vodka, yeah? Yeah. Hostel. My friend's sprite kept getting stolen, even though she wrote her name all over the can. Finally, after the fifth time it happened, she got a habanero, cut it open, and rubbed it all over the top of the can and left it in the fridge. We found out who the thief was when that afternoon we hear the office drama queen shriek in her cubicle and run to the water cooler. She never stole anything again. Busted. Busted. That's like uh, a similar one where uh, someone was stealing this person's egg at work, a hard-boiled egg. We had hard-boiled egg every they single day. They just put day. like a random hard-boiled egg in the fridge? No, it was their hard-boiled egg to eat. For, yeah, or whatever. they just bring in a one, hard, one hard-boiled egg and just put it in the fridge? Yeah, I get, or two or three. I don't know how many hard-boiled eggs you eat. I'm not an egg person, so I can't, you know. Well, All I know I, is this person Doctors will tell you to eat egg. only one full egg and two egg whites. Okay, so this person's eating one full hard-boiled egg. I don't know what their doctor's telling them, but someone at their work was stealing it. So what this person did was replace one of their eggs one day with like a rotten egg. What was that called? The egg you ate, Ryan? Oh, the uh, century egg it's called. Uh, I don't even remember that. Let's not talk about that. Um, but so yeah, this person, let's just say this person never stole eggs again. Again. Shouldn't steal eggs. Never stole them again. That was an excellent story. 
Thank you. Do you want me to tell it again? I mean, I want you to tell that joke again, please. Yeah, exactly like you did the last time. Or exceptionally better. (laughs) Yeah, do it again, but make it funny this time. (laughs) What? (laughs) So I found out this girl I slept with had a boyfriend the morning after. So what did I do? I taped a message under her toilet seat where only the dude would find it. And it said, yo, this chick just told me she had a boyfriend in the morning. I'm sorry to tell you like this, but I'd want you to know if it was me. Sorry, bro. Sick. Yeah. Get revenge on the girl that he slept with. So it's a win-win for him. <laughs> you know? He comes out the good guy no matter what. <laughs> yeah. All right, Seamus, shoot your shot, buddy. Uh, I'm going to talk about serial rapist Aku Yadav. Uh, for many years, Aku Yadav was seemingly untouchable. Even though he was a notorious criminal, he was known to have raped more than 200 women from Kasturba Nagar slum of New Delhi. Preying mostly upon members of the untouchable caste, the lowest members of India's social hierarchy, who received little to no help from authorities. Aku Yadav also routinely, routinely bribed corrupt officials so they would drop his cases and had a gaggle of henchmen that worked his, his behest. Get, get her, Gregory! Right. <laughs> you know, for a second there, when you said uh, he only slept with the untouchables cast, I was like, I don't think there was 200 people in that movie. Robert De Niro, get him! <laughs> Despite countless women coming forward with allegations of rape against him, Yadav always managed to remain free to rape whomever he wanted. In, Jesus. in fact, whenever a victim reported him to the police, the authorities would alert Yadav, who would then visit the women and threaten to throw acid on them or rape them again. He had raped so many women in the neighborhood that many believe that a rape victim lives in every other house in the slum. But the women's revenge would come sooner than they expected. Starting with the actions of Usha Narayan, a victim who had reportedly been harassed by Yadav. With help from her brother-in-law, Narayan reported Yadav to the deputy commissioner, who promised that police would arrest the serial rapist. The residents of the slum seemed in little mood to wait. That night, Yadav's house was knocked down by angry neighbors and local residents. Perhaps fearing for his life for the first time, Yadav surrendered to the police. The next day in court, Narayan and many other local women, most of them victims or friends and family of Yadav's victims, heard that the Yadav heard that Yadav was likely to escape punishment yet again. Together, they swarmed the courthouse with armed with vegetable knives, stones, and whatever else was at hand, pitchforks. Uh, as he walked past the angry women in court. Aku Yadav taunted one of them, calling her a prostitute and threatening to rape her again. And the policeman who was escorting him just laughed. The arrogance of the rapist and the open neglect of the police who were supposed to protect the women caused the women in the crowd to simply snap, and an altercation quickly broke out. We can't both live on this earth together. It's you or me, the woman cried as she began beating Yadav with her sandal. The other women quickly converged on Yadav as well. The mob was so violent and overwhelming that the police guards quickly fled the courtroom, leaving Yadav to the armed mob. Sick. The attack lasted for more than 10 minutes and left Yadav's body butchered on the courtroom floor with 70 stab stab wounds and his his penis was cut off. Nice. Poetic justice. Taking this for a trophy. It was... This one's going to be a trophy. It was not calculated, Neri Ains later spoke of the incident. It was not a case that we all sat down and calmly planned that would happen. It was an emotional outburst. The women decided that if necessary, they'd go to prison, but that this man would never come back and terrorize them again. When police tried to arrest five of the women for Yadav's death, all the women in the village protested, and soon every one of them had taken responsibility for the murder. Mary Ayn and several other women were arrested and, arrested and tried, but were eventually released due to lack of evidence. Who was a roommate, and he was kind of cheap, um, and he would always go into... We worked opposite schedules, too, and he would go into my room to jerk off. I caught him once in the act. I was enraged. So fucking enraged. So when he was at work... I'd be mad, too. I started having sex with my girlfriend on his bed, and then I would wash the sheets and wash the comforter every time. 
we did this for like a week straight. And then my roommate would always say how fresh his sheets always smelled, like how great his detergent was. Revenge me. What do you mean they would wash the yeah. sheets every time? That's because they were fu- the whole point. No, they were so they were well, they were fucking on his shit on his bed, and uh, they were like being kind of respectable, but not. So like they're fucking on your bed the whole time. You still want your roommate fucking on your bed if he's washing your sheets? I don't give a shit. That's much preferable. Yeah, yeah. no shit. But do you that's want not revenge? revenge? That's fucking weak ass revenge. Well, that's like a nice revenge, I guess. I didn't. Well, that guy doesn't have revenge in a, in him. He's not cut for out for revenge. <laughs> Hell bed you stayed in's been fucked in. Right. I, that's why I fuck on the floor. Oh, that floor is even grosser. You don't you think you're the only one's fucking jizzing on that floor? That's yeah. why I fuck in the shower. <laughs> oh. Well, given your track record with standing up in the shower, probably not a good idea. Oh, that's why I fuck in the hall. There's nowhere where they're cleaning thoroughly in that hotel room. I you fuck in the air, that, baby. You gotta put that behind you. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You just got to fuck with, without a care, man. All right, so let me change that. So they fucked on their roommate's bed all the time, and they left loads on his pillow. Thank you. That's revenge. Revenge. Me. Load. Pillow. Sleep on it. Warn me about a few customers, but one in particular was always rude to the drivers and never tipped. Lucky for me, I got to deliver his order of a single calzone. Maybe six or seven dollars total. And he tried to pay with a fifty dollar bill. All the menus in the website prominently said that no, nothing over a twenty dollar bill for deliveries. And he'd been their customer long enough to know that. But when I told him this while explaining how I didn't have enough change, he got extremely rude and was loud about how it's not his fault and that drivers should always carry enough money on them. So I did what any person in that situation should do. I told him not to worry about it and I'd pay for the order. For those few seconds, he thought he'd won a free calzone until I pulled it out and started eating it as I walked back to my car. (laughs) That's awesome. Take that, you piece of shit. Revenge is a dish best served calzone. Oh, I see what you did there. Do you make calzones at your restaurant? Nah. I make them for personal pleasure, though. Why wouldn't you make calzones there? You have a fucking sick pizza oven. Do you put cornmeal on your dough? No. Why wouldn't you? Greg Katzmeyer, make calzones. And put cornmeal on them. Yeah, and put cornmeal on them. There's only three people working here, okay? There's only so much we can do. Calzones, Greg Katzmeyer. How is calzone any harder than making a pizza? It's literally the same thing. It's a pizza. Right, it's you're just folding it, it over. I don't have time to get in. I can either make a soft taco or a hard taco. What you want? <laughs> hey, we only have three people here, all right? We, can, we can give you two. <laughs> all right, Greg, go. All right. My boyfriend cheated on me, so I convinced him to get matching tattoos. He went first. I went home. <laughs> oh. Um... To the person who stopped the washer in the middle of my wash cycle and took my clothes out just to wash yours. Yeah, you're an asshole. Unfortunately for you, so am I. You can find your uh, wet clothes frozen outside in the snow. <laughs> Any problems, come see me at room 420 69 Yeah! It was actually room 320. You deserve that. The fuck would just take someone else out? Like, well, I'm in more of a rush, so. <laughs> they don't understand. I gotta get to swim practice. Crunch. Upon receiving my bill, I noticed a $30 charge for table linen. As I was leaving, I folded up the tablecloth. The waiter said, what are you doing? I said, I paid for it. I'm taking it home. And I did. (laughs) (laughs) One of my roommates kept stealing my Pop-Tarts, so I ordered a little UV fingerprint powder off Amazon and dusted it over the packaging. (laughs) <laughs> Next time a pop tart got stolen, I checked all of my roommates' doorknobs for the powder with a black light and found out who was stealing my breakfast. Alex, you still owe me a box of cinnamon frosted pop tarts, you fuck. Those are the best. They're pretty good. Second to strawberry. My neighbor's dog shits in our yard all the time. It wouldn't be a big deal, except he never cleans up after her. 
I finally had enough, so I decided to go with a classic. I put a flaming bag of dog shit on his porch, rang the bell, and hid in the bushes. When he answered the door, I finally got my revenge by having an affair with his wife for the last three and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> Old man Harris hates dog shit. Stories. Now stay tuned for some other shit. I gotta tell you that it's Gregor's stories, yeah. Today. We do have a Gregor Gores. Uh, to explain to the audience, uh, you could do a double word score. Say it was a game show that begins with B and it was Baby Billy Bible Bonkers. You know, that'd be like a four. Four point score right there. You know what the deal is. This is Gregory's. Welcome, one and all. Best weapon for revenge that begins with an R. Raphael's sigh. Okay. Seamus. Red handkerchief. Red around his neck. I don't even know how many that was. <laughs> Is that at least right. three to four? Give me three. Yeah, that's the best four points for Seamus. I'm going with Seamus. Okay. I didn't call it a rest cut. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He's like, yeah, probably like a guy wearing an ascot. And he was silent for a second. And it's like, you know, like the thing Fred wore around his neck and Scooby Doo. He's like, yeah, I just said Ascot. I had no idea what it meant, but I knew you would. <laughs> Where's <Rascot>? Ascot? <laughs> All right, you're fucking getting your revenge on, and you have your headphones in. What is the best song for revenge that begins with the letter L? Let's see. Ooh, nice. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Um, I don't even know if Seamus can even answer this. <laughs> a ween song right there. Loser. Actually, it's a, pr- it's a Prince song. All right, fuck. Points. Ryan. Uh, ac- actually, the name of the song is L-M- L M L Y. P. Now, shame is the dots between each letter mean that each letter represents a word. So, oh, is that what that meant? <laughs> Check this out. Now we're getting all this. That's two points for Ryan. Negative one point for me, and I'm not even in the game. Sick. Okay. Your means of a getaway. P. Sweatpants Man. Overlord. Ryan. Peter Parker's perfect web slingers. Okay. Sweatpants Overlord. Yes. Peter Piper pickled a pickle that would drive him home. (laughs) (laughs) A pickled Rick teleporting prop. All right, you know what? That's a wash on that one right there. Man. Okay. <clears throat> ah. Okay. You're about to take revenge on one of these motherfucking people. They killed your mom. All right? A celebrity, mom? a sports figure, a politician that begins with T. Who you killing? Sweatpants Overlord. Yes. Tony the Tiger. Oh, yeah, he would totally fucking take you. <laughs> He's great! So are I. My mom said. Um, that's, a, that's a triple reward to her. <laughs> <laughs> Tony La Russa, Tito Jackson, <laughs> Tommy Bong. Yeah, it goes to Ryan. And that's a three-pointer. And you know what the score is right now? It is five to five. 
we have three questions left. The name of your sidekick begins with D. Sweatpants Overlord. Seamus. Dustin Diamond dips the diddler again. <laughs> I mean, Dust- Dustin Diamond works great. <laughs> Sweatpants Overlord. Yeah. Dimebag Daryl. Oh, fuck. I was going to say, well, Dustin Diamond's dead, so I'm going to give him respect, but they're both dead. Isn't de- yeah, I was yeah say. they're both dead. I mean, Dustin Diamond had a great cock. Dimebag Daryl is an amazing guitar player from one of my favorite metal bands, if you would even call him a metal band. I don't even know what you would call Pantera. I'd call him a, a metal wash. band. That's a wash. We're still tied. Fall metal? Metal light? City where you take your revenge. S. Sweatpants Overlord. Mmm. Summersworth. Ugh. <laughs> well, I hope you wear gloves. <laughs> uh. The five Lee going into the very last question. Oh my God. Name of your solo podcast begins with B. A sweatpants overlord. Mm hmm. Better be the best podcast with no co host. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, because he's very humble. And <laughs> I'm going to go with baby Uncle Baby Billy's Bible Bonkers. <laughs> and Seamus for the win! <laughs> uh, That's a four winner. I'll, ha- I'll have the audience know even when I've won this, I still give it to Seamus. <laughs> oh, uh, well, you didn't. All of a sudden, though. he's magnanimous and humble. I'm just saying I could go through our past history of episodes and I have two clear wins in Gregory's that I gave to Seamus so he wouldn't be mad at me. <laughs> and the winner is Ryan. I'm, it's a I'm moral, pissed it's now. A victory. <laughs> you know who won? I think the audience won on that one. Uh, Absolutely uh, I, welcome. I, I mean, maybe we could disagree. Stuff crust. We got some more of those coming. Uh, next episode of You Can Eat That Crust. We're going to do Pranks Gone Wrong. Uh, Ryan just got us up on some more platforms, which are. Uh, now you can find us on Castbox, Amazon Music, and Audible. And you can also find us on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Pod, Mutecast, Apple Pod, Twitter, Graham, Podcast, Fox, Fox, whatever Fox. the fuck it is. Twitter, Instagram, fucking Facebooks, you know, all that stuff. We're here, we're there, we're everywhere. Absolutely. Uh, Thanks, everyone. (laughs) And remember, everybody. In crust. crust. We trust. In crust. We trust. That's right. We trust. Okay, great. This ends our podcast. If you don't like that, not your thing. Well, there's other camp.